Dear Bethesda, I'm afraid of heights. You know, I don't even know why I bother to say that. I feel like it's a perfectly natural human instinct to be afraid of heights. Heights are dangerous. Hell, you can die just by falling the wrong way in your own goddamn house, let alone from a potential free fall from several stories up. You and other game developers seem to have gotten the memo, making fall damage an ever-present factor in almost every game you make that isn't a retro-style platformer, further serving to enhance my anxiety about falling. Jesus Christ, I come to your games to get away from the realities of everyday hazards and yet find one of the most genuine and most likely to kill me hazards in almost every single fucking game. That is, until you guys unleashed your new and improved power armor concepts in Fallout 4, complete with cool things like death claw repellent, jetpacks, and infinite protection from falling. Fuck yes, just what I've always wanted. No longer must I care about my pesky enemy gravity. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 Bullshit! The first thing I thought of was car accidents, which means we have to talk about G-forces. You know that phrase, it's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop at the end? That's damned true, and it's the same thing for car accidents. It's not traveling super fucking fast that kills you, it's the sudden stop when you, you know, hit something, like a wall, or another car. Anyway, let me explain. Instant stops technically don't exist. We perceive them that way, but we suck, so. When you hit something in a car, a series of events happens. Force is transferred both into the vehicle and into the object it hits, slowing down the movement of the vehicle and speeding up the object that it just collided with. Like those little marble things on strings that they have in novelty stores. Of course, if the thing you hit is a thick wall, the wall isn't going to move very much, which is really, really bad for you because all that force is going to go all the way backward back into you. You know, it's probably a bit inaccurate to say it's the sudden stop that kills you as much as the sudden deceleration. G-forces are what you feel any time you change speed or direction. You're in a car and you turn and you feel your body pull a little bit in the other direction? That's G-forces. G's, the unit, are equal to one Earth gravity. So if you're on a roller coaster and it zips around a corner and you feel one G, that's the equivalent of being pulled to the side by the same force you feel that keeps your feet on the ground. So if you weigh 150 pounds and you're pulled one G to the left, you'll feel 150 pounds of weight to your left. And if you're pulled by two Gs, that's 300 pounds and so on and so forth. Our body has a limited capacity to deal with really high G-forces. And what's a high G-force? I'm glad you ask. Fighter pilots are capable of surviving some of the most extreme g-forces for extended periods of time than any human on earth, and they can pull as much as 9 g's at once. Take that same 150 pound person, and now they're feeling over 13 1,500 pounds of weight. And John Stapp was an officer in the United States Air Force who built a fucking rocket sled to test the effects of G-forces on the body, and he survived G-forces exceeding 43 Gs, making our 150-pound person from earlier feel over three tons of weight at once. People in car accidents experience, by contrast, about 100 G-forces. When these forces are applied to our bodies, they strain our joints, put tension on our bones, and put pressure on our respiratory systems. In fact, that last one is particularly important, because high G-forces can actually completely disrupt our blood flow to our organs. This is the biggest thing that fighter pilots have to fight when under extreme G-forces, because if they fail to keep blood flowing to their brains, they could pass out and send their plane career reening off into the ground. But what does this have to do with power armor? Well, it's important because when you hit the ground in your power armor, all that force is being applied directly to your body. I mean, yes, there's some cushioning from the armor and people survive high speed impacts in vehicles all the time, but dropping from the sky in power armor is nothing like being in a car crash. For one thing, you stop really, really quickly in power armor, way faster than you do in a car accident. In a car accident, you decelerate over the span of like about a second. The front end of your car crunches forward, absorbs some of the force and giving you more time to slow down. The seatbelt grabs you, the airbag deploys, all of which are designed to give you precious time to drop from what are normally fatal speeds. By contrast, in power armor, you drop from whatever your speed is to zero in six frames. 
one tenth of a second. But that's not all of it. Speed is incredibly important. And to know how fast you're going, we're gonna have to do some math. What we need is the terminal velocity, or the fastest possible speed you'll be falling through the air. You see, as something falls towards the ground, gravity isn't the only force acting on it. The atmosphere, the air, is also pushing up. At a certain speed, the force of gravity and the force of the atmosphere will cancel out and you'll stop accelerating. This is called a terminal velocity. The terminal velocity of the average human is 195 miles per hour, but how are we gonna find the terminal velocity of our power armor clad superhero? Easy. Send them high up, drop them, and measure their speed. Calculating the average human to be about six feet tall in power armor, taking video moving at 60 frames per second, our armor moves at roughly one power armor height per frame. Six feet per frame at 60 frames per second gives us a velocity of 245 miles per fucking hour. Holy shit. That's way, way, way faster than most people will ever move in a car. Anyway. Knowing that, and knowing how quickly you decelerate to zero, the rest is really, really easy. Just do some quick division and multiplication, and the force you experience is... Holy shit, 366 Gs. That's higher than the really poorly sourced highest G forces ever survived by a human ever. But Austin, you say, all that force is conferred upon the power armor, not you. It's all good, baby. Bullshit. Your body is still traveling that speed. It's still stopping that quickly. There's no way that you're not feeling that. And that's more than enough power to pull all of your blood into your head, bursting blood vessels and giving you an immediate stroke. And that's not to mention the shock damage to the rest of your body and internal organs as they suddenly experience the equivalence of 366 times the Earth's gravity, all pulling you up at an instant, snapping your shins, bursting your bladder, rupturing your heart, and overall giving you a really, really bad headache. Furthermore, a fully loaded suit of power armor with a person in it has got to be over 250 pounds and hitting the ground at those speeds would impart over 450 kilonewtons or 101,325 pounds of force directly into the suit, which is over two times the tensile strength limit of most steel alloys. That suit would crumple like a wet paper bag into fucking nothing. <sighs> but you know what, Bethesda? That's all right. I'll take it. Because honestly, I'm so over falling damage. I'm done being scared of heights. I'm over it. I'm gonna go celebrate now by jumping off my roof. Ain't no gravity gonna hold me back. Sincerely, Austin. P.S. If you like to know things about how the human brain and society works like I do, you should totally pick up this book I just finished called The Lucifer Effect. It's written by Philip Zimbardo, who's most famous for something called the Stanford Prison Experiment, which experimented with power dynamics and corruption by taking ordinary people and giving them power over one another. It's pretty awesome and a little bit unsettling. You can pick this book up and others at audible.com, our sponsor for this video, where you can actually get a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook to go with it if you mention our name. If you don't want to listen to this one, no biggie. They have over 250,000 titles to choose from. Just head to audible.com shoddy or click the link in the description and nab your free trial and audiobook and try not to get hooked. Thank you everyone for watching my video about power armor and fall damage. I know several of you have asked me to do this and I finally got around to it. It was pretty fun actually. And I hope you learned something about gravity and g-force and terminal velocity. If you have any questions about any game franchise, I would love to answer them about the science, about how they work or most of the time don't work. Uh, I would love to talk, to, uh, go through those things with you. So just uh, leave a comment with what you want to know about and I'll see if it can do it and that's awesome and I have turned into Hank Green because I have lost what I'm trying to say. John, I'll see you on- wait, no, we have more things to say. I want to extend a personal thank you to our Patreon donors who make this show possible and every show possible and you guys are awesome and I want to thank you so much for everything you do. You are beautiful and gorgeous and I love you so much. Uh, if you have- if you like this video, like it and share it with your friends and if, uh, you uh, like our channel, you should subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Please subscribe, I love you. Um, is that it? I think that's it. Subscribe, don't subscribe, you didn't like it, I don't care. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Bye.